Hello, my name is Jeroen Lukers, Professor of Arts Education and Critical Tactics at Arte's University of the Arts. I'm working with a team of more than 20 researchers on the future of education with arts as a creative strategy. I was asked by my colleague Nishan Shah how we in this sense could look on the one hand to the relation between the individual and the community and on the other hand to the relation between the natural and the artificial especially when it comes to online learning, of course. The digital revolution has given us the possibility of online meetings, sometime, something that we perceive often as unreal. I want to question this proposition because in fact for me it is not proven at all that the online world is de facto an unreal world. Real is for me what is true. And an online meeting can be true, but also not true. Something that has to do with contact. For example, when the ICT team meets, and this is in this time of Corona crisis in an online environment, time flies. And why time flies? Because there is true contact even in these online meetings that are surprisingly real. This brings us to the second statement. A statement, the statement that I also want to question, namely that the, un, that the natural world, opposite to the technical advanced online world, is a real world. I am really not so sure that the natural world, as we encounter it in everyday life, is real. Coming back to the definition that a real world is a true world, there are a lot of uncertainties concerning this issue. Are the communities we are part of real or is the real only a form of window dressing? Is, for example, a random marriage based on a true relation or a pragmatic agreement? Are the regular accountants with our colleagues real? Or is the office a big illusion? Is a friend who calls himself a friend there for love or sometimes for profit? So, asking ourselves the question of having real or non-real contact from one person to another is in fact non-dependent from the medium, but in fact from the question of real commitment and connection. This means that the online communities and natural communities both can be true or not true, real or not real. The question therefore should not be yes or no to the online communities, as it often seems to be, especially now, but yes or no to real connections, to real contact. What is in fact the issue is whether we're really committed towards a community, whatever the medium will be. When the real is the most important thing we have to think about, how did we take up the challenge of the real? That's the second part that we want to discuss. In this I want to bring in an experience I time after time meet, namely that the only way to get into the real is the willingness to sacrifice the unreal. Let me explain what I mean by that and what it takes, what the consequences are to sacrifice the unreal. To understand this, it is first of all important to understand how difficult it is, how much courage it takes to stop the unreal. When somebody, for example, is telling a lie and you sense it everywhere, 
And you also know that everybody knows. Do you dare to stop the lie? Do you dare to face the group? Do you have the do you feel the possibility to say to face in fact a possible accusing a position of who gave you the permission to interfere with this game that we are all part in and letting the lie intact? It is really not so easy to be the bummer. Not having an idea of an alternative, just saying no in the unreal. It seems that we very often have to face the fact to clear the way of the unreal to open up the real. What the real is we can say we just don't know in advance because the unreal occupies still the space of the real. The only thing that at the moment this unreal reality occurs is that we can say we're radical abstract to what is a lie. And in this discontinuity towards the lie, making space for the truth, the rebel who has the freedom and uses his freedom to draw the line based on the motivation not being part anymore of this destructive direction. And in making this space by saying no, trusting on the creative ability in nature to bring about something positive when there is the space to create. So in fact, the only thing that has to be done as an activity is to stop the unreal and then the rest will come by itself. It is like clearing the ground, like a farmer does, so that the seed that will be brought by the wind one morning or one afternoon can land in this open space and take root and grow and blossom like a plant that could never be predicted in advance. Some years ago, I saw a beautiful movie, Rebel Without a Course. It's already a movie out of 1955. I described it also in Adolescence, Paradise Lost in 1999. It is about the existentialist mode of the adolescence. Jim Stark, the protagonist, played by James Dean, just can't accept the world of his parents, the world of his teachers, the world of his peers, a world full of lies. His red jacket is in fact a constant rag before the bull, the bull being society. He's like the biblical Cain, always in a fight, always saying no. As the story runs, Nicholas Ray, the director, shows that in fact the despair of Jim is in fact the only way to salvation. Jim has to take the risk. Jim has to surrender. Jim opens up the space without knowing why, simply because there is no alternative. In saying no, he loses contact with his father, Frank. He loses contact with his girlfriend, Judy, not being able to cope with the lie. In doing so, in the end, putting an example, not knowing if there will be a happy ending. What brings about this example is the importance in stopping the lie. So to conclude, what is important for a community also, also an online community, like a natural community, is to say no to every form of unreal relations. In my case, as a researcher, this means those relations that are only based on a kind of research industry, a formal duty, a disciplinary focus or big money streams. The well-structured system of predictable thinking, formal patterns, big grants. To make the real, what is important to choose is to choose for the real context, the true relations, which are in essence unpredictable, hybrid, 
without economic security, even without a priori focus. In true relations, what we choose for is for the community, a commitment towards each other, come what may come. It is the affirmation of a person or a group and trying to make sense out of it, whatever it takes.